Hey what's going on guys, welcome back to another Photopea tutorial. This one's going to be an in-depth guide for beginners, intermediates, really anybody because I'm sure you could learn something from this video. I'm going to go over most of the things that I use, the most important things in there. So stick around if you want to know. And if you don't, still stick around because I need the watch time because I'm trying to get to the... Okay, so this is what photop.com should look like when you first open it. So we're going to start with the new project. So you can either go up to file new or you can go to new project right here. And here is the new project menu. There's tons of options and I'm going to go over most of them. So let's start over here with the dimensions. So this is basically the size of your document or your project, whatever you want to call it. 1920 by 1080 is what it's set at now, but that's like a wallpaper. Over here is what the dimension is going off of. So pixels, that's what you usually use for graphic design. There's percents, inches for like printing off stuff. The background's usually gonna be white for graphic design, but if you're making like an emote or something that has a transparent background, you wanna go with transparent. Over here is a bunch of templates that is going off the dimensions right here. So if you change it to 1280 by 720, it changes the template size too. So if you're lazy and you want to just pick something over here, just click on it and you'll be good to go. Over here are some pre-made sizes. So there's a YouTube banner, YouTube profile picture, Twitter profile picture, Twitter header. So if you want to just go off those, you can. But 1280 by 720 is a thumbnail size. So I'm just going to go by that. So let's hit create. So now I'm going to start off by showing you how to import either your own image or bring over a picture from the internet. All you got to do is go up to file, open, and if it's on your computer, just find it in your files and just double click on it. But if you want to bring it over from online, just search up that image and I'll show you how to do it. So I just looked up desktop backgrounds. I'm just going to find a random one that I like. So I'm going to use a random picture that I like, like this one. Just right click on it, go down to copy image. Go back to your photo P tab and hit control and V and it should bring it over, but it's a little big, so it's an easy fix. I'll show you how to change the size and all that right now. So what you want to do to change the size of this picture is go up to edit, retransform, and here you can hold left click and move the image. You'll see that there's boxes at each edge and you can just hold left click on one of them and drag it down like this. But you'll see it's all warped so you just hold shift instead of just left clicking so I'm gonna undo that go back to its original state this time hold shift while you drag it so it makes it all one size like this and this red line is basically telling me that it is centered we're just gonna hit the check mark up here to confirm it and now that's how you resize it let's say you want to rotate it all you got to do Go up to edit, transform is a rotate option, but I recommend using these right here. You can flip it horizontally like this. Now it looks all weird, so I'm gonna not do that. And there's a bunch of other options here you guys can mess with. Pretty self-explanatory, but we're gonna move on. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually edit this image and make it look a little bit nicer. You could do this by going up to image. And here you can see auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. These automatically do it for you. So if you hit auto tone, it'll automatically tone it for you. But I like doing it manually. So I'm just going to go up to adjustments instead. Click brightness and contrast. Turn these up just a little bit with this, this little scrolling bar. I like to do it just a little bit. About like 12 and 8. Hit OK. Go back up to image adjustments. This time let's go to vibrance. This makes the colors pop a little bit, so turn them up a little bit too. Hit OK. And now, hue and saturation. So this really only works if you're trying to either make the picture look like you're on drugs or if you're doing graphic design. So like, why would you want to change the grass color to purple? You just, you wouldn't, unless you want to get high, which we're making it sore right now, so we don't. So just hit OK. Now I'm going to show you how to blur, sharpen, filters basically, that's what that is. So go up to filter, under sharpen, if you hit sharpen, it sharpens your image. 
if you go to blur Gaussian blur is the one I use you could just blur your image that's all it really does but it's really nice I use it in my graphic designs I put the nice let's play now okay so I probably got a virus but that's alright all the Gaussian blur does is blur your image but I like it so let's hit okay another thing you can do here is go to a filter gallery here you can make your image look like a painting if you click this little drop down menu you can adjust what the painting looks like though you can make it look like super blurry and this takes a toll on your computer so just a warning and my computer is good I don't know why it's tripping out like that but you can adjust it to however you'd like you could do strokes like that there's a bunch of options so mess with that if you want now I'm going to show you how to fix your mess ups there's tons of ways to do that you can undo it by going up to edit clicking undo there's step forward and backward step forward just obviously goes forward in your history versus backward and your history is right here so the history goes back every change you made so let's say you're at vibrance right and I want to go all the way to Gaussian blur so if I do step forward it goes up in the history so you can kind of see it visually and same with backward it goes backward undo redo just undoes the last change but that is the undo redo and the history history is really important I always use it but it's preference now we're gonna move on to layers layers are super important layers is basically your images your text your effects everything and they're all gonna be located on the right side of your screen right here so there's layer one which is the image I can hide it by clicking on the eye so if you want to hide it and just see the background you can do that you could change the opacity here to make it like see-through but you only do that with like effects and stuff you could change the blend mode to multiply to screen any of them down here you can make a new layer by clicking this button you can delete the layer with this button you can make a folder to store your layers in which is good to be organized and the rest of these are kind of pointless because you can get to them elsewhere like through these menus but if you want a shortcut you can just go here okay so now we're going to move on to the toolbar on the left you're going to be using this a lot of the time we're going to start out at the top with the move tool the move tool is pretty self-explanatory basically whatever layer you have selected is going to move whenever you move your mouse so you can move it like down up center it that's what the move tool does you can just move any layer okay so now we're going to move on to the toolbar on the left you're going to be using this a lot of the time we're going to start out at the top with the move tool the move tool is pretty self-explanatory basically whatever layer you have selected is going to move whenever you move your mouse so you can move it like down up center it that's what the move tool does now we're going to move on to the marquee tool which is right below the move tool marquee tool you can just draw a square around wherever you want and whatever layer you have selected you can center it inside that square that you just drew by clicking these buttons up here so centering it horizontally centering it vertically it basically just makes like a little area that it's going to center on so if i made it like right here and tried it it would be different it would center it in the square right here so you get the idea that's what that does but make sure your move tool is selected whenever you want to use these tools up here to center it now we're going to move on to the lasso tool and if you right click on it there are three options i'm going to go over all of them but i'm going to start out with just the regular lasso select so with this one you just want to draw around something that you want to delete and if you let go anywhere it just connects automatically but make sure you unlock it when you want to delete it and hit delete so it just completely removes this layer, puts a hole in it. And if I unhide this layer, you can start seeing it. So that's what that does. All of them work the same, but in different ways. So if we right click on it and go to polygonal, this one is point to point instead of just holding left click. So if you click once, click again, click again, click again, click back to the start, you can make shapes that way. So it's good with sharp edges. But in this case, it's not good. We'd have to really get in on it and click around every single corner like this. And it still wouldn't look that great. But if you want to get rid of this, just hit Control D to deselect. That's how you get rid of that. 
the last one is magnetic. If you hold left click, it tries to like go around all the edges itself, which sometimes it works. Other times it's it doesn't, but like right here, it works all right down here. And then you just want to connect back to the start again. Not a big fan of that one. I'm being completely honest, but there's reasons to use it, reasons not to use it. Okay, so now right below the Lassa tool, there is a magic wand tool, which I use this a lot. And I think a lot of you guys would too. If you left click on like a specific area and the color is basically the same, it'll select all of it. But if there's multiple different colors, it won't select it. So it works good on solid color backgrounds to delete them. Like if we had a white color background, which I'll show you an example of right now. Okay, so right here we have a parrot and there's a white background. So if you use your magic wand tool and just left click on that white, it'll select all the white. So now when you hit delete, it gets rid of the white. So it's like really nice. I like using it. Make sure that the whole white is in the picture though. Because it was outside of it. It didn't erase it. But sometimes there's issues with it. Because you can see here there's still some white. But it works most of the time. That's what that one does. So now we're going to move on to the eyedropper tool right here. What this does is it takes the color from whatever you click. So let's click in the orange area. And you'll see it's right here. But if we had some text like that. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I click the color right here for the and I take the eyedropper and click on the parrot. It'll change the text to that color. So it's it's pretty useful. I never use it though, but you might. Now we're going to move on to the spot healing brush tool, which this is pretty cool. I'm going to zoom in on this parrot with my spot healing brush. And it's like a little circle. My cursor is a circle now. I want to make it a little bit bigger. Let's say we want to get rid of this eye. It'll use what's around the eye and try to like fill it in. Sometimes it works and sometimes it makes it look dead. That's creepy. Oh God, help. You, you see what I'm trying to say? Like it uses the area around it. So now it's like a parrot with no eye. That's what that does. Or if there's like a fence in front of a dog, you can get rid of the fence which I made a video on if you want to check that out. This works with like real life pictures. I never use it with like graphics or anything. Or if you want to like remove like blemishes, it's nice. But you get the idea, that's what that does. Now, the brush tool is just a brush. That's all it is. You can draw stuff with it. Also for the brush tool up here, if you click this little drop down menu, you can change what kind of brush it is. And that's kind of cool. If you want it to be like strokes or thick circles, you could turn the size up as you can see here. So it's pretty cool. And the eraser tool erases whatever layer you have selected. So we have this background layer selected. So it's going to start erasing it and showing what's behind it, which is this other image right here. That's what the eraser tool does. We have the blur tool right here, which you could turn the size up by going to this little drop down menu. I turn the strength to 100 and whatever you select is going to start blurring. So it starts blurring it out manually, like a certain area. Like if you want to blur your face out, you can do that. Okay, now we're going to move on to the text tool. So if you click on the text tool and left click anywhere on your canvas, you'll see a line that pops up. That means you're ready to start typing. It Most likely it's going to start out really small. So how you fix that is hit control A to select all your text. And go up here to size and you can either use this little scroll wheel thing or you could type it in manually. So like 200 and it makes it bigger. You can use your move tool to move it to the center. You can change the font right here by clicking this drop down arrow. They got a ton of good preset fonts, but you can import your own as well. I made a video on how to do that if you want to check it out. But we're just going to find a random font. Here's our font. Don't worry about changing your color from here. There's a different way you do that. If you want to warp your text, you click this warp button. Click style and you can choose from any of these options. I like arc. And I turn the bend up like this. Hit OK. So it's pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. But I'll get back to that in a second. The pen tool. So every time you click. It starts filling in a color. So if you wanted to make a really weird shape like that, 
you could do it. I don't really use it. I'm not really sure what it's used for anyway. Besides what I just showed you, but if you want to experiment with that, feel free to. There's the shape tool, which you can make a rectangle, ellipse, line, all those. So you just say we want to make a rectangle. I just hold left click and it makes a rectangle. So it's pretty easy and it works the same for all the others. There's the zoom tool, which if you click that and hold left click, you can either zoom in or out with your mouse. You move it left to zoom out, right to zoom in. I do use this quite a bit, but you can also go up to view and you can do it here. But it's up to you. Now I'm going to show you a little more in depth with the text. So if you double click on the text layer, you can see layer style right up here. There's a ton of options you can do to your text. So if you want to change your color overlay to blue, green, you just slide up and down and then you can get a little more precise over here. So let's just make it purple or no, we'll do red and opacity 100 we can add an inner glow and make that white by dragging up here always change the blend mode to normal that's just a tip i'll give you i don't really use screen i don't see why i would but you can use spread and size to adjust it like this outer glow is the same but it's on the outside instead of color overlay sometimes i like to do gradient overlay which is from one color to another. So if you click in this little box and double click the box on the left, you can change it from like yellow to red, which is really cool. I use that a lot and usually just leave the other settings the same. You can add a stroke, like a black stroke and choose the size to like, or change the size to like 11. You can change the size to like 11 whatever you want to do bevel and emboss but makes it like 3d ish which i don't use that much you can add a drop shadow and that's basically all the layer style does so now that we're done we're going to save the file so you go up to file you can either save it as a psd which means you can come back to this file later and edit stuff or you can go to export as and that makes it an image that you cannot edit so png is like good all around. It's also good for uh, transparent backgrounds. JPEG is just a, another image. And the rest, I don't know, I don't really remember what SVG is. I don't use any of these, I just use PNG and JPEG, but mainly just PNG. So PNG, make sure the quality is 100 and hit save. Now I'll show you how the PSD works. So if you hit file, save as a PSD, You'll see it's down here. If you ever want to come back to this file, just drag it onto your photo P and it will open that file again. So hopefully this helped you guys. If it did, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.